Happy New Year, everybody. Co-host Doug here, kicking off another episode of Nomad Athlete Radio with a few brief announcements. As always, thanks for all the love and support in the iTunes store. We've seen a huge jump in rankings recently, which means you guys have been sharing, subscribing, and rating the show. So thank you. Today's five-star shout-outs go out to Kay Saxonmeyer. And by the way, Kay Saxonmeyer, I love the image of you binge listening to Nomad Athlete Radio. I don't even know if I could listen to Matt speak for more than one episode at a time. Only kidding. Of course, he's sitting here right next to me. Jim does VOIP 1 and Running Romeo. And as a quick reminder, we've started taking listener questions and answering them on the show. If you have a question, just call 951-NO-MEAT-1. That's 951-666-3281. Or email radio at nomeatathlete.com, and we'll pick a question or two to answer at each episode. Also, Matt's 31-day program, Wake Up, is on sale through Thursday, January 8th. It's a daily program for getting motivated, setting goals, and taking action to achieve them with a new action designed for each day. Normally it's $31, that's $1 per day, but through Thursday it's less than half that at just $15. Check it out at nomianathlete.com slash 31 dash days. All right, that's it for now. Matt, you ready to get started? You know it. One, two, three. Hi, this is Hope. This is Hi, this is Katie from Washington, D.C., and you're listening to No Me Radio. Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to episode 52 of No Meat Athlete Radio. I'm Matt Frazier, joined by Doug Hay, and we are excited for another year of podcast episodes. That's right. So anyway, let's, uh, we're going we're gonna to do something that's a little different today, talking about a No Meat Athlete blog post, but updating it. And we're, I think we're probably going to do a series of these, not all in a row, but go through some of the popular posts that not everybody knows about, because a lot of people who are just podcast listeners and don't know about uh, the the post. So while most of the posts on the site are uh, throwaways, we've <laughs> managed to you know the old blind squirrel finds a nut now and then. Managed to write a few decent ones. What we're going to talk about today is the seventeen weirdest things I do now that I'm vegan. But we are going to have a whole bunch of new weird things that we do now that we're vegan. That's right. And uh, this has been a really popular post. So I think this will be a fun episode. First, though, we should talk about write and run thirty one, which you, Doug Hay, are an active participant in. Yeah. <laughs> so uh it's a challenge that i'm doing with my sister christine from her blog is called better novel project.com and the challenge is exactly what it sounds like it's to write and to run every single day for the first 31 days of the year of course there's nothing that is special about the beginning of the year that you have to do it on january 1st so you could actually start if you're hearing about it for the first time right now you could start this challenge today or tomorrow or the next day and then just do it for 31 straight days instead of ending in on February 1st, you'll end on February 7th or 8th or 9th. So uh, it's been really fun. I've really enjoyed it. We started the challenge really because Christine and I both thought that we personally could use it. Like I know I just the, the needing to go run every day makes me do it, whereas otherwise if I don't have a race on the schedule, I'm probably not going to get out there and run. And uh, exactly the same with writing. Like it's It just helps me to stay ahead of it i've written more blog posts i'm on pace already for way more blog posts this year after, <laughs> after two posts in one week uh which is which is good so I, i'm enjoying it. it's been really good for me and we have like 700 people doing it with us so uh, i don't know what do you think doug yeah i've been blown away because you kind of put this together last minute with christine and and didn't really not kind of we did it was lit, like it was like 11 59 and we just <laughs> did it instead of going to parties yeah well i guess that's a good thing but um <laughs> Yeah, no, without really reaching out to people ahead of time or building it up ahead of time, and just people had just jumped right on it. I couldn't believe that, you know, 700 people joined within the first few days, and, um, and that participation has been incredible. I know that every time I post, so you you kind of created a, a space for people to post um, their success stories or kind of what they did that day, and, and the amount of love that people and support that people are, are giving you with each of those posts has just been incredible. So the, I don't know, I've loved that community aspect of it. And of course the discipline of, of running and writing every day. Yeah, that's been fun. It's been really, it was well received. We kind of, when we made it, we set out to like, we said, okay, we could do this like as internet marketers and kind of like design it to do everything, you know, encourage people to share it so that every step along the way, there's like this, this little asking you if you can please share with friends we just said we're not going to do any of that we just wanted to make a nice thing that would be fun for us 
and that would really just help people get started this year off to you know get it off to a good start. So I've been pleasantly surprised that that without doing all those you know internet marketing tricks <laughs> of trying to get people to share, it it has sort of uh, found found a little following. So it's yeah. it's been good, and I think it's done a lot of good for people. So I'm very satisfied with it. And those people aren't going to go anywhere after January 31st. So I think that you know if you started now, I'm you know I'm sure that that community aspect would still be very strong. Yeah, and we're trying to figure out what to do what to do when the month ends if we will like just continue it and say he wants to do write and run 28 now for february <laughs> or if if like maybe we'll ask everyone who has finished it to now adapt their thing and like if you want to keep going think of a new thing and by the way it's not just writing and running like we called it that because her blog's about writing mine is partly about running but we kind of wanted it to be like for people who want who don't do that stuff too so if you like my wife she knits she doesn't write and has no desire to write. So she has knitting as her, like, the creative side of it. Yeah. Similarly, if you didn't like running and you just went to the gym or something, you could you could do that instead. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I think, yeah. And I, I saw somebody is doing songwriting, and there's other people who are doing yoga instead of running. And, you know, it's kind of all over the place, which is, it's cool. Right? It is, and it's fun. So anyway, um, if you are interested in doing that, it's at write and run 31 the number 31.com. So check that out. You can join us anytime. And uh, it's totally free too. Yeah, so I guess we should have uh, we should ask. Did you have a good New Year? I had a good New Year. Yeah, I I was my family was kind of sick. We we got hit pretty hard, mm. uh, which was not good. But the flu or what, what did you guys have? I don't know. Whatever the kids bring home from school, whatever uh. that thing's called. Uh, so we had that, and I don't know. It, we didn't do much. We kind of hung out. Did not make it up to the. Did not make it. First of all, did not make it up to New York for the ball dropping. Second of all, did not actually stay up for the ball to actually drop in our own home. So we just, <laughs> we just went to bed at like 11 o'clock, uh, which was sad because I like New Year's, but I don't know. We were going to have a party, and then we got sick, so we didn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I uh, I think this was the first year that it's you know every year it kind of gets a little less exciting, and you know I quit going out and was going to house parties and that kind of thing um, for the past few years. But this year was the first year that I really uh, sat at home and <laughs> with a few people, of course, or at someone else's home, but, um, you know, and just played board games. Like, there was like, no, <laughs> like nothing special about this night at all, except that, you know, it was a lot of fun. It was with some friends and stuff, but it was, you know, we were playing Ticket to Ride, which is not, <laughs> you know, a super thrilling board game, but it was fun. It was good. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I love New Year's. It's a fun holiday, and I don't need the uh, the going out and getting drunk aspect of it. Like, I'm not opposed to that, and if, if the opportunity arises to do so, then, then I might do that. But uh, it's also really nice just to sit home and watch the stuff on TV for it. We had to mm-hmm. adjust our antenna to get it, but we, we did get some of it. Um, and as I wrote in a post, I didn't know that 2014 was the year of the booty. Did you know that? The booty? Oh, yeah. yeah. Actually, I did know that, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> of everyone having big booties and taking uh, booty selfies. Belfie, I think they call it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I missed that entirely somehow with not having TV. I don't know how. With all the twerking <laughs> I, going on and all that right, stuff. Right, I know. 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 But I did. Uh, anyway, so that I don't know. It was fun to sit home and just watch that and then <laughs> make a nice dinner, drink some good wine. Yeah. I think this was... This was um, Maybe I shouldn't say this on the podcast, but this was the first year that I woke up on January 1st without any hint of a hangover, <laughs> really? and uh, yeah. which was great. I mean, it just felt so good to be starting the year. We, My wife and I went on a big hike with a few family members, and it was just a great way to start the year outside and being active and doing... Yep. Not suffering through my first day of the 31 right and, right and run yeah, challenge. Yeah, I know. So. Right. It, it is, that is a nice thing about... Having kids and not doing that. We were talking about it the other day. That like you just don't get hungover as much with kids because you can't. So yeah, that's good. Cool. All right, so let's get to our listener question for this episode, submitted by Mandy from Wisconsin. Thank you, Mandy, for submitting a question. Hello, this is Mandy from Wisconsin. Thank you for the podcast. My question is about vegan products. Uh, you recently had the shoe company on, and they said that their shoes are vegan, and there are everyday products that I'm looking for that are vegan friendly like a vegan pillow vegan winter jacket vegan socks and i was wondering if there's like a community area or a list of websites that have these company names kind of like an amazon but for vegans uh so that is my question thank you bye okay so that's a good question mandy uh i actually do have some answers for this i don't really for some reason do that much shopping of this type i think i just kind of get everything at whole foods or the grocery store or 
I don't know, just kind of be careful with it. Like if I go to Ikea, make sure I don't get down pillows, but just get the stuff that isn't that. Uh, but there are a couple good sites. Vegan Essentials is one, just veganessentials.com. I know of them because they actually uh, stock and sell some no meat athlete shirts. So I, every month or two, I send them a big, a big box of stuff. Uh, so that's, that's a good one. just has tons of different stuff. And the other one I know of is called, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's it's basically like for animal, but without the L in the end. So for anima or for anima, <laughs> anime, I don't know. <laughs> but it's a marketplace, um, and it's it's tons of stuff. Nice looking site, all different categories of toiletries and food and whatever else. So yeah. that's the one I know of. You had a couple too, right, Doug? Yeah, well, the only one that's kind of similar is uh, Zappos, which now carries clothing and other body care products and all kinds of things like that. Zappos has a vegan section, so it's just zappos.com slash vegan. And um, they're everything, all the shoes they list and all the clothes they list are are vegan. So that's kind of that's kind of helpful. I do that a lot when I look for shoes. The other shoe one I know of, besides Ultra, who you mentioned in the in the question, Mandy, uh, Brooks at least used to be all their same as Ultra, all their non walking shoes. So basically, all their running shoes mm-hmm. were vegan friendly. I don't know if that's still true. It's hard with shoe companies because they tend to, you know, like unless they're committed to doing that, then they may have one one model made somewhere and then the other model gets made in some factory where they do happen to use this glue that that is from animals and like it can switch at a moment's notice if there's some sort of shortage in one place you know they'll they'll right. put it so, so like you don't really know unless they are committed to actually doing this so brooks used to have ads little google text ads but they would say all our all our running shoes are vegan mm. uh so that's that's another one i don't know that that's still true though and I know Tom's, which is the shoe company, or the shoe brand that I wear as casual shoes. They have a vegan line. They do? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Not all their shoes are vegan, but they have a vegan line. Right. And by the way, it doesn't, I mean, you you may already know this, but it's not just whether it's made from leather or not. The, I think probably the bigger issue, I mean, that's pretty obvious whether it's made from leather or not. The bigger issue that's more hidden is what the glue is made out of that holds the sole to the upper. Right. And that, a lot of times that's derived from animals. Uh, and I had one more thing to add to that. And now, oh, so this is sort of unrelated. Barnivore.com, though, will tell you about beer and wine and stuff like that, which ones are <laughs> vegan and which ones aren't. You can't order from them, but that's a good resource for figuring that sort of stuff out. So hopefully this has helped you, Mandy. Thank you for your question again. And by the way, everyone, feel free to call anytime and, and submit yours. We, we'd love to answer them on the air. 951-NO-MEAT-1. <laughs> <laughs> you like how I said on the air there, like we're actually on a radio station here? Yeah, well, it feels like it. Now we have these... <laughs> these mics and these these uh, sound boxes that are <laughs> right. So my office is echoey in my new house, and and you probably have noticed that if you're an avid listener that a few weeks ago the podcast got a little echoier. Uh, anyway, so we now have cardboard boxes that are covered in blankets. Very professional looking in here. Mm-hmm. Anyway, like, it's now, a step up. From we just see one of those things where you like push a button and it makes like a horn noise every time you say something dumb or something. We like do that. need like, that. We definitely need some sort of buzzer like that. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> We'll work. Got, don't get on that. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> All right. So let's get to our to our topic. Um, what I'm going to do really quickly, because I, I don't uh, pretend that everyone knows about this blog post, that it's that popular. It did get on Huffington Post, which was cool. It was my, I think it was my first one that I ever published there uh, when they, they took it and reprinted it. So that was kind of a neat thing. It got about a billion negative, hateful comments on there. <laughs> uh, I read about three of them and stopped. Actually, I don't even think I did that. I think I saw that there were 500 comments and said, this is not good. I'm not going to not going to read those. Uh, but anyway, the ones on nomeatathlete.com are a little bit nicer comments. I'm going to run through them. It's been a really popular post. I think the reason is because it just people see their own behaviors in here, and, and they kind of can find the stuff that, that they've done. So I'm not, the post is goes into a long description of each thing. I'm just going to read them down really quickly uh, so that we can, we can provide some context for adding our new ones. And by the way, this is back from 2000, I think this was 2012, could have been 2013. But it was a while ago. So anyway, the 17 weirdest things that I do now that I was vegan back when I wrote this were live microwave-free, hand grind my coffee, have a freezer full of broccoli stems and strawberry tops, drink weird-ass smoothies, use pink salt, wear trail shoes everywhere, dehydrate things, run with dates, make tons of stuff from scratch, buy everything else, Amy's, Annie's, Bob's, Tom's, Bragg, and Bronner's, Put tofu, avocados, and black beans in desserts. Live with very little stuff. Eat weird pastas. Drink kombucha. Sprout things and buy sprouted things. Live in Asheville and eat weird foods. 
So anyway, we've probably gotten there. There were two comments that happened over and over on this post. The first is, "Oh my gosh, like I I do twelve or fifteen of those things." The other one is from the non-vegans who say, "Well, you know, I do a bunch of those things, and I'm not vegan, and so therefore this post is terrible." <laughs> um, but uh, like I don't know that that was kind of my point. Like a lot of this stuff, like wear trail shoes everywhere. That's not that's not really a vegan thing. It happened to be for me because I I before I knew about these sites like I just told Mandy about, I didn't know where to get not vegan friendly like leather shoes, like brown shoes that you would wear. So I just wore trail shoes because they were gray and they weren't white and it just looked a little bit better. Uh, other ones, I mean, you know, you don't need to be vegan to not have a microwave, of course not. But I just kind of went that route and I, I felt like going vegan was kind of the gateway just to getting into the weird stuff which is why the post is called 17 weirdest things i do now that i'm vegan it kind of felt like permission to start being weird since i did this one weird thing and my life didn't get ruined it actually got better so <laughs> why not do more weird things yeah so anyway right. that's where it is doug i'm sure you can agree with some of those especially live in Asheville. yeah that's live right. microwave free i i think uh, my favorite one on this list is the sprout things and buy sprouted things because i didn't even know what you know until i went vegetarian at least i didn't even know what sprouting different things really was which maybe that just has to do with the type of food i was eating but you know i think that a lot of people probably have no idea what sprouted beans are and all that kind of thing yeah and and that's another example like you certainly don't have to be vegetarian or vegan to eat sprouted stuff i mean you don't, you don't at all but it's just it's just the way that you go, and you can say when you go vegan that you're going to avoid it, and you're not going to become one of these people. But uh, I don't know; it's pretty hard not to. You kind of you kind of do because you start shopping in different places, and then you get looped in with with these other people, and mm-hmm. that's what happens. But I think I, I think I'm with you on 16 out of the 17. Oh yeah, <laughs> what's the one you're not <laughs> with me on? The one I'm not on is the dehydrate things because we don't have a dehydrator. Ah, but, um, I'm always that. every every time I come over and and Aaron, your wife is uh, dehydrating something. I'm always like, oh man, I should really <laughs> invest so in one of those. Complete the 17. Oh, and the trail shoes, you know, because I just have a sense of style that you don't have. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess so. <laughs> just kidding. Well, that probably is true. I do not have a sense of style. I just wear running shoes pretty much everywhere. Yeah. Which is sad. <laughs> Comfortable. What are you going to do? Married you never know kids. when you got to take off, you know. Yeah. And Especially honestly, yeah, I mean, bears and everything. It's like. Right. Exactly. You know. And who do I have to impress? Right. I mean. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. All right. So let's, let's get into our new ones, our new weirdest things we do now that we're vegan. And uh, I'm interested to hear if, if there is any listener feedback about this, the, you know, whether it's the, oh my gosh, I do that too, or you don't need to be vegan to do that. This is stupid. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, okay, so my, my first one, and I think we're going to use this for the image of the podcast if I can get it to work, is store stuff in mason jars. Uh. So, so if, if I take a picture of my cabinet, which I believe I'm going to do, you'll see that the entire thing is just filled with mason jars. There are no more boxes. It just <laughs> looks like the bulk section of a store. <laughs> and that's weird, I know, and it's embarrassing to show people that pantry in some ways, but like, I don't know, we do it because we buy a lot of bulk stuff. And there's actually a little bit of a backstory behind this one, and we won't spend this long on every single one. But we have, in the past year, had two different infestations in our uh, house food supply. Those little worm thingies? First was rice weevils, which are not worms. They're like little, I don't know, what, they almost look like little tiny thin ticks. There's yeah. little black bugs that crawl around. They go in rice, they go in any kind of grains. And we got them, and then like three days ago, we got all these moths in our food. And so like we just went in our stuff, including the glass jars that had plastic lids where we had stored like rice after we opened a bag of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were in there too. They laid eggs in there. There were moths flying around in there. Ooh. So it was so gross. And we just kind of like threw out everything and said, okay, the only way we are storing food now, having had this happen two times in, in a year, is in mason jars that are sealed shut that no bug can get into. Mm-hmm. So here's the thing. I This actually did come from me vegan because... I think the way these things happen is you get them by buying bulk food. Right. So they kind of live in grocery stores and bulk foods. And maybe maybe the best ones are sanitary and don't have it. Uh, but I think it's probably a problem that's kind of hard to avoid if you're, you know, if you warehouse all this stuff. Mm-hmm. So I think buying bulk stuff created the infestations. But anyway, we are we are bug free now and hopefully we'll <laughs> stay that way. Good. Do you uh so my question for you is do you 
have matching mason jars or are they just like total mismatch like old pasta <laughs> jars or you know no they're almost all matching okay. we, we, we went and bought mason jar sets yeah i wouldn't i don't well, i wouldn't do too well with that with a big mismatch set yeah like that. We, we used to do that and when we first started kind of buying more bulk stuff and it was like any jar that we would any glass jar we would get we would keep it and we would just fill it up with stuff and it just it looked <laughs> it looked so ridiculous and finally yeah. we we're like okay we're gonna upgrade and get <laughs> right, some stuff that right. doesn't look quite as bad my wife is trying to push the let's start drinking out of mason jars thing. Like she wants that to be our water glasses and our and our drink glasses, and I'm just I'm just not on board with that. I'm not doing it. No, no. A lot of places, there are places in Nashville who serve drinks that way, like mm-hmm. the buy water. They'll serve the drink, yeah. and it's kind of cool to go do that. But I don't want that to be my everyday. I don't want ridges on my glass. You know, like I want mm-hmm. glasses made for drinking. We have a couple of glasses that are mason jars. Yeah, I don't like that. That's why I don't mm-hmm. come to your house ever. I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> like that. That's All right. Funny. How about you? What do you got? I got, uh, well, what, what of mine is that I find myself um, sneaking, or I don't know, I, I don't know how to really describe this, but when I bring a dish, I love bringing a dish to a potluck where people don't necessarily know if I'm <laughs> vegan or not, and right. knowing that it's vegan and other people don't know it's vegan, and then kind of like casually mentioning that it's vegan, you can kind of see everyone's face look all perplexed, and I don't that's know. I a just, good one. I love that. I think that's so, it's like, it brings me so much joy when... When someone eats something that they don't know is vegan, uh, and they might they might have, they might not have eaten it <laughs> had they known. Uh, with our the black bean brownies that we have, uh, and I mean you certainly don't need your brownies to be vegan in order to make them black bean, but for whatever reason they're often vegan. That people always mention that in the comments, like oh I brought this to my company picnic and fed it to everybody and didn't tell them anything that they were vegan and mm-hmm. black beans. In it. I was always <laughs> like I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be that kind of guy who does that that mean stuff to people but i'm glad <laughs> that you i'm glad though. that you are i get person. so much pleasure out of that so. <laughs> well what if someone did that to you that slipped in non-vegan things for you and and thought yeah, that was but, funny well <laughs> somebody yeah. could be ethically opposed to eating vegan okay all right no <laughs> maybe not <laughs> maybe but all right my next one is we stopped using paper towels and napkins which kind of is more along the theme of that that post i just read that's kind of the stuff we were into back then which was just getting rid of a bunch of stuff and I don't know, being as eco-friendly and all that as possible. So this, again, is my wife's doing. She has cleared our house out of paper towels and napkins, mostly to my chagrin. I kind of like having that those things, uh, but we don't have them anymore. We use just, like, regular towels, and then you have to wash them after you're done. Yeah, that's good. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> my next one is that um, we will never go on a – road trip more than four hours without bringing a cooler full of food <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> yeah we do and that too when we went home for or when i went to harrisonburg uh, which is about five hours five and a half hours away uh, for christmas we had two coolers full of food. i mean it was like enough <laughs> we could have been stranded on the side road for a weekend and <laughs> and would have had plenty of food yeah but... you didn't even have kids i mean i thought that was more of a kid thing but i guess it's i guess it's a vegan and kid thing yeah yeah i mean we didn't even really need to even stop for a meal but we had so much food there and it was uh you know, what was in there? What's your what's your go to bring along food? We we do um, like hummus and vegetables that you can dip in, mm-hmm. and then PB and J sandwiches, and um, you know just some other snacks and lots of dips and things like that. Yeah, that's us too. A lot of hummus, a lot of almond butter sandwiches, mm-hmm. fruits, trail mix too. Yeah, fruit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, next one. Um, I got. That our idea of a vacation has become something like the Woodstock Fruit Festival, which is <laughs> which I was going to put into just worse terms, but then I thought that'd be sort of an insult to the fruit festival. Like, say, our idea of a vacation is is spending a week camping with kids with no food and a bunch of smelly people around, but they weren't smelly; they really weren't. It was it was uh, I was I was pleasantly surprised by the crowd that was at the fruit festival. Um, I, I think maybe I think I mentioned this before that maybe the, the cost of the fruit festival kind of prevents a little bit of the unsavory types from showing up right uh not that i think a lot of people are unsavory but <laughs> as far as they smell you know a lot of just people in the vegan crowd i think maybe because of these weird things you know smell not quite as good as people in the other crowd. all right man you're gonna offend all of our listeners actually i should add this <laughs> okay here's the problem people when they go vegan have less body odor i think this is true but i think it's not as much as they think it is so then they stop using deodorant entirely <laughs> And and still have some odor, but they're just no longer coming up. So that, I think that's what happens to vegans. So, uh, so you wear deodorant is what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, and and <laughs> but like the Tom's deodorant doesn't always work. I don't think. Uh, I At don't like that. It stopped working on me, so mm-hmm. I don't I don't use that anymore. 
I don't use any now because I don't smell anymore. I'm <laughs> having body odor. <laughs> All right. So anyway, um, I mean, you know, we told people we were going to this thing and we we're like, yeah, it's this really awesome thing where all they have is fruit and we're here for a whole week and that's all you can eat and it's raw. And people were just like, like, why are you doing that? Like, why would you possibly go to that thing? But we had a blast, as I said, on a podcast episode. So the fruit festival as a dream vacation is my next weird thing. That's good. That's a good one. My next one is that uh, I go way out of my way to go to a, a vegan restaurant even though you can especially around here you can get a vegan meal just about any restaurant um you know i'll go i'll go 20 or 30 minutes out of my way <laughs> if i know that there's a full 100 percent vegetarian or vegan mm-hmm. restaurant that i can uh that i can dive into here yeah and i think that's rather than just going somewhere where you know you can find an option right it's like right. go to yeah because it's you know what's really fun about that is and it's difficult is when you if you're not used to eating at vegan restaurants and you find one it's really hard to look at a whole menu of food yeah. and realize that you can get any of this stuff. Yeah. It's like, it's just hard to choose things because you want all of it. Mm-hmm. And it's like the, an overwhelming experience. Right. Because normally you only have a few options and it's pretty easy to just pick. Yeah. Like there's not much choice. You just pick the vegan thing mm-hmm. and that's what you're eating. But it's liberating. It's great. So I'll go it way is. out of my way to do that. That's a good one. All right. My next one is related to the fruit festival thing. Uh, but ever since then, we buy brown spotty bananas we get the mm. bananas that when my dad saw us buying these and he was like well what, you're buying all the bad ones they're going bad what are you doing <laughs> and we get a whole bunch of them because also since that fruit festival we just happened to eat a lot more bananas so every grocery trip we probably grab three to four bunches of the brown spotted bananas which is nothing like a true fruitarian who would buy a whole crate of them or, or mike arnstein take a take his truck to the warehouse and fill it up with them but uh that that gets some weird looks now and then when we, when we intentionally buy the spotted bananas but that's, that's and, how you, and you're doing that just so you can eat them right away, right? Why are you doing that? It, well, the reason that what they told us at the fruit festival, and I I tend to believe this is true, I don't know why, is that when they're when they're spotty like that, that's when the sugar, when the, as much starch as is going to be converted to sugar has actually been converted. Mm. So they oh, so see. they're just a different fruit, and it's much easier for your body to use that stuff. So if you're if you're doing the thing where you're eating a smoothie that has eight bananas in it, it's way easier to drink that smoothie if it's all fully like seemingly overripe bananas then if they're kind of a little bit green it's just hard to stomach that much starchy stuff right right so that's how we do that cool i have uh buy more cookbooks because i never used to be a cookbook person i would either you know call my mom for recipe or look it up online and there's thousands available but now that i'm cooking you know if i'm looking for a vegan recipe or a vegan um way to cook something then you know there's only a few a handful of authors and people that I trust and, and I'm willing to buy their cookbook and explore what all kinds of things that, you know, I didn't even know you could make black bean brownies. I would, that would have never occurred to me, but you know, now I do. And so now I would mm-hmm. buy that cookbook. So well, I've become a cookbook person since going vegan. You know, I think what that is, is what? that like you, anyone knows, or most people you should know, you can go online and get any recipe you want. Now like, there's no reason to buy a cookbook anymore. You can just anything you want to move for, Google a few of the ingredients or the type of food you want, and you will find free recipes online. But I think with vegan, because it's there's more constraints and it's perhaps a harder type of cooking just because you have less to work with, mm-hmm. that it's easier to make a really bad vegan recipe. So you, <laughs> so you got to get somebody who you trust right, to right. do it well and who you know mm-hmm. has done it well before. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think, yeah, because I think people are scared off of vegan recipes online, even though there are plenty of good ones. If you just look up the authors whose who's cookbooks, you know, like, like we do a post-punk kitchen a lot. Because mm. we like Issa's stuff, and it's we do oh, she glows yeah. dot com a yeah. lot, yeah, mm-hmm. which is sort of like a cookbook. I mean, it's right. like you, you know who the author is, and you're right, right, right. Yeah, good. All right, my next one is buy seaweed. <laughs> we, we have never, never been had been buying seaweed before. I still don't eat the stuff. I don't, I hate the taste of it. If I ever get sushi, which of course is just the sushi rice with vegetables in it, uh, the seaweed is still the, the part that like makes my stomach turn just a little bit if I if I get a big bite of seaweed, but. <laughs> my kids eat the snacks of it that they get at whole foods like these little packs i don't know what they are they come in little little plastic packs and they're like they they eat it like chips they, they pull these little seaweed pieces out and eat it my wife puts it in beans whenever she makes beans from scratch she puts kombu in there which is a kind of seaweed hmm. and it does something to the digestibility of them maybe adds a little bit of flavor but i don't taste it because if i did then i wouldn't eat them <laughs> uh but anyway we buy seaweed now and lots of it that's a good one that's good <laughs> My next one is that, uh, and I've, this probably applies to anything that you're passionate about that, uh, you know, is maybe unconventional, but I 
will go way out of my way to avoid talking about being vegan with some people and not stop talking about being vegan to other people. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, and that, that just it depends on the person and the, how their reaction will be. But, you know, some people I am very secretive about it. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's for something that's such a big part of uh, my life and, and that kind of thing. To be that secretive about it with some people is is kind of weird, I guess. But And then, you know, and then there's other people like you who it comes up in every conversation we have so <laughs> does it i don't know <laughs> maybe not <laughs> I, I don't want to be the guy who only talks about vegan things maybe uh, I am that. Yeah. all right good um okay here's another one we get really excited whenever we get invited to dinner now because that mm. has that has kind of stopped like we our friends don't invite us to dinner like they used to i mean we i don't know <laughs> before we, before we went vegetarian it was like we could always we did that a lot we had dinners and we would get invited to dinner even like family, like we just stopped kind of getting invited to places, and I have no idea what the reason is because we try to be so, like, open about it, and like we're totally cool about bringing our own stuff or eating ahead of time. But I think people are probably, first of all, it happened when, when we got really into cooking. We started getting really into cooking before we were vegetarian, and actually started getting invited to dinner less than it seemed. Like maybe people waited for us to to initiate it because they didn't want to cook for people mm-hmm. who are into cooking. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think I think once you go vegan, then it becomes a whole other level of like. People just don't want to don't want to try. They don't want to go down that road of like trying to make a good vegan meal. Right. It just seems too hard. So right. we we love when we do get invited. It's it dinner parties are fun, and I, that's one thing that I kind of miss since we've gone vegan. Yeah. Well, you know what? It probably is. It probably has nothing to do with yeah, you being vegan. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> we invited you over for dinner not that long ago. You guys came over. That was fun. Yeah, and yeah. right, and you're vegan friends. Yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, my next one is that we keep all kinds of veggie scraps and that's not for composting uh which we should probably start doing now that we have space to do it but um for just making our own veggie broth mm-hmm. which you know it's all the scraps that most people would throw away you know but just as similar to how my dad keeps the bones from the chicken or the turkey um you know we're, from the kale. we're, yeah. Yeah, we're keeping the, the bones from the kale yeah exactly so um that's something i think that mm-hmm. a little weird it is. All right, I've got one more good one, and then I've got three like runner-ups that didn't quite make my list. How many more do you have? I have um, I have four, but there there's some runner-ups too. One more good one, three more runner-ups. All right, so my last good one is that we now adopt farm animals. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's a good one. So, of course, when I say that, I want people to think that we're actually adopting farm animals and that we have a house full of them. What we do is we do uh, farm sanctuary. When mm-hmm. We do charity stuff. A lot of it's through Nomad Athlete. Uh, it's cool when you when you adopt or when you donate to them you adopt animals and i don't know really what happens like if anything actually happens with that particular animal or if you just get sent a picture of it and they tell you all of its name and its interests and its favorite foods and all that stuff and where it got rescued from and all that's really nice for the kids they love that sort of thing uh it's next best thing to actually having farm animals come here (laughs) and it's nice to imagine that maybe when you give money that particular animal is benefiting from it i don't really know or care if that's true but yeah it's nice to you know a nice way to think about it one, one of my runner-ups was that i find farm animals uh cute <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which before yeah. i would have thought that they were kind of gross and whatever but now all of a sudden i picture happy pigs that are uh-huh. you know rolling around <laughs> in the mud i guess it's not that cute but <laughs> i still picture much happier your pigs but but so, wait, wait, you picture wait at, at a regular farm or like a like, uh, a, no, farm like sanctuary? a farm sanctuary yeah, okay yeah. i just now, 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 than now that i now that I don't associate uh, farm animals as dying, even though they are, <laughs> I don't know, for me, gotcha. my personal You think opinion, of them as farm sanctuary. I think of them as being cute. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. But that was my runner-up. My, another, my last good one, I guess, is, um, and you, you touched on this actually in the original post, is that uh, I run with Whole Foods now with real actual food instead of um, gels and, and even clip bars and things like that. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll pack a sandwich or pack a wrap or you know, pack any number of fruits and, and that kind of thing that, that I'm taking on my long run. And that sounds not weird at all to us and probably people listening to this, but like when you go to a race and, you, and you're and you the guy who has all this yeah. like, actual food, it's really weird. People think yeah. you're a weirdo. Oh, yeah, totally. So so that's, um, you know, and, and that goes into so many different things as to what you should be eating when you're running and, that, and all that stuff. But, um, I you know, I just, I think that that's because I don't, like the gels nearly as much in the process stuff that I yeah, nearly as right. much anymore. All right, so my ones that didn't quite make it, but I'm still just going to list off here. Uh, make our own cleaning solution and medicine and a bunch of other stuff, uh, which is from essential oils. My wife got into that. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's like a distributor. Even though she doesn't really sell them, she just she just buys them. Uh, you know, make lots of things out of oils, which is kind of fun, I guess. Mm-hmm. 
eat kale chips instead of potato chips, which I think a lot of <laughs> vegans do. And you don't have to be vegan at all to do that. A lot of people can make kale chips, but until you're vegan, it does. I mean, you know, potato chips are vegan usually. So mm-hmm. there's there's no reason why you should replace that with kale except that it's healthy. And I don't know. We did that. So people do that. That's a weird thing. Uh, have friends at Whole Foods. Like we, we, a lot of like employees and people there at the new Whole Foods in Asheville because we literally go there, I think, five times a week. We, yeah, no way. Yes. Wow. And it's not like we spend a $200 every time, but we just find a reason to go there five times a week, <laughs> I swear, because of the, the kids need something or we need a meal or a lot of times if I'm, if I'm going to go buy beer, I'll just go to Whole Foods because it's yeah. a good place for that. Uh-huh. So there are people there, especially my wife, who actually like, you know, are, are friends and like Jesus, I do them. And Whole Foods asses. famous? I, I guess she is that, yeah. <laughs> um, and then my last one is that we, this is not a funny one, but care about oil-free, gluten-free, and raw. Because, like, these are things that when I, when I went vegetarian, I was like, I could never be vegan, I thought. And then when I went vegan, it was like, well, I, I have no interest in ever being raw or oil-free or any of that. But it's just like, it seems like when you go down the road, you just keep going down it and you, you I don't know, become interested in these other things. So, like, I am by no means oil-free, gluten-free, or raw. But when something is that, I I tend to choose that over the other dish. Mm-hmm. Maybe not with raw. With raw, like if I'm at a restaurant and they have a raw dish, I almost never actually get it because I feel like that's wasting a restaurant trip to go eat a raw <laughs> meal. But uh, we, you know, I try to. I'll try to eat raw nuts instead of regular nuts at home. We'll buy the oil-free hummus instead of the hummus with oil, and right. so on. Yep, that's good. So my my kind of second tier ones are. Call it plant based instead of vegan. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Which uh, you know, for for whatever reason, I feel sometimes feel more comfortable, and and it, it resonates more with how why I went uh-huh. vegan to begin with. Uh, uh-huh. um, return clothes that are gifted at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yep, because you know half the things I got um, weren't vegan, so I, I returned those, even though I might like the shirt or the or whatever. Um, I preemptively told my mom this year, and she had to like take things back already. <laughs> <laughs> Return clothes, and then the other one is uh, something we actually touched on a couple episodes ago, and that was get more passionate about things that I didn't wasn't passionate about before. So I, you know, as we've talked about, I went vegetarian or vegan, vegetarian and vegan because of the environment, and then all of a sudden now I find myself much more passionate about animal rights and and that kind of stuff. So yeah, which is true, and that's when you said the thing about thinking of farm animals as cute, like yeah, that, that's you just right. start to I don't know why that is, but you at least you there's more of an awareness I think and some sort of sense of compassion that sort of just comes when you when you do this stuff yeah which is cool all right so that's it i think we probably had like 21 new ones uh did you say all of your possible ones though? i did yeah so i think that i think we counted ahead of time that was 21 didn't plan on getting them all in but we did so they're no longer 17 there are now 38 weird things Whoa. that we do now that we're vegan, <laughs> which is cause for celebration so what's the uh what's the url for the original one it's it's nomiathlete.com slash weird dash vegan. Okay. And that is, I don't know if it's the most viewed post ever on Nomi Athlete because there's lots of like search engine, but like that one doesn't get a lot of search traffic. There are certain ones that like about protein that just get a ton of search traffic. Uh, but I think that's probably the most shared one. I don't remember mm-hmm. what it is, but there's like 28,000 Facebook shares on that post. And then on the Huffington Post version of it, there were, I don't know if it was more, but it was another really big number like that. So, uh, yeah, something about that one. I don't know. When I wrote it, I had a feeling it would be a really good one, but I had no idea that it would be the the most popular in that sense <laughs> at all. But I think, like I said, people just kind of recognize themselves in a lot of the things and maybe didn't stop to think about that before. So Yeah. yeah. I think that's why it was well, It's good. fun. It's fun to kind of think it is about fun. uniqueness. And it's fun yeah. to make fun of yourself. I mean, mm-hmm. I think a lot of people take this so seriously and can't make fun of themselves, but I think... Uh, that's the only way that I could possibly do this whole lifestyle is if I kind of made fun of the things that <laughs> about it that are kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Which I happily have adopted, of course. Oh. <laughs> Did you get... This is completely off topic, but it's kind of weird. It's definitely weird. Did you get the um, grounding blanket for Christmas? No, I did not. Oh, okay. Somebody just left a left a comment on the blog that I happened to see that said, like, I'm, I'm disappointed to see something on this blog with so little scientific evidence behind it. <laughs> <laughs> No, I said that on our Christmas list, on our wish list, and then I forgot to actually tell anyone about it. Like, I don't uh, know. When I uh, thought of it as a wish list item, that seemed perfect, and then I just totally didn't tell anyone about it. <laughs> so I might still get those. Yeah. But no, I do not, I do not own grounding sheets. <laughs> All right. So that uh, wraps up our episode number 52. Yep. First one of 2015. 
I don't know if we'll manage one or two a week, but hopefully we'll be at uh, we'll be well over episode 100 by the end of the year. Definitely, maybe yeah. 150. Who knows? But uh, I'm looking forward to it. We've got a lot planned. Uh, I think this will be a fun series, just talking about some of the more popular blog posts that lend themselves well to a podcast topic, like today. We're not going to read them all. Don't worry about that. But uh, just kind of updating them, letting people know about some of the better posts on No Meat Athlete, or at least the more shared, more popular posts. Mm-hmm. Uh, in case in case you are a podcast listener who has never checked out the blog, then uh, you should do that. It's at nomeatathlete.com. There are a bunch of archives. There's a bunch of best of type pages. So uh, if you haven't been there, <clears throat> make, <clears throat> make that a New Year's resolution of yours. Yeah, and one thing that we haven't talked about but I think would be kind of fun is if, if you guys have some weird things that you would like to be included on the list or that you think are weird that you do that other people might get a kick out of, uh, email us at radio at nomeathlete.com or you could just – call and and leave a message and we'll kind of compile some of those uh, in a future episode that could be be good for a little follow-up a little follow-up so uh yeah share us what weird things uh that you do that we left off our lists now that you're vegan or vegetarian you don't have to be vegan like vegetarian is fine too we we made it vegan just because i think people people just think of vegan as weird so Mm -hmm. it's a better better fit for a title but uh you can be weird and be vegetarian too yeah All right, this is fun. Uh, Looking forward to doing another one like this and uh, looking forward to doing another year of this podcast. So thank you all for listening and uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right.